So that's a, that's fine. Uh, our right hand table looks like we just lost one of our really loose players, but we've got some other loose players here. Uh, so it seems to be going all right. All right, I'm going to fold this hand, run, and grab a drink. I'll be back in 10 seconds. All right, king nine, we got the limper. Uh, we'll let this one go. Oops, grabbed the wrong, <laughs> grabbed the wrong headphones, hold on. All right. Oh, I assume there should be some mean reversion. Revision? I'm not sure. Hold on a second. I've got someone yelling from the other room. I will be right back again. Sorry about that, we're back. There was no emergency. Okay. Oh gosh. Like pick up the power cord or something? I, no, um, it's coming back. My internet just literally uh, stopped for a minute. I don't know. I don't know what's going on with XSplit. But my. Uh, streaming. We're streaming again. Oh, oh God, where did my. Whoa. Carbon just literally like just like went away. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I just want internet that works. <laughs> Like my internet, you know, like the little bars in the lower right of the screen, it had like the little yellow exclamation point indicating that it they're just it wasn't even seeing the internet. Like the is that, exist your, is that your actual internet or your router? It sounds like a router. I mean I've got like a brand new high speed router, so I don't think it's the router. I think it's like just the internet just is not very reliable. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. This is kind of a good conversation to throw out to the people in the audience here. But if you lose your internet, right, but you still have your router connection, it'll still say you still have full bars, right? Well, I had bars, but there was an explanation point saying it couldn't it couldn't find the network. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that's a good point. Well, so what's been going on in the news? The <laughs> Egypt has been, you know, in disarray. I would not go. I would not recommend going to go see the pyramids. It sounds like a terrible idea. You're probably gonna get your head chopped off. Um, what's going on in Egypt? Yeah, it's a, it's a huge uproar. Basically, uh, they're overthrowing the government. Really? Yeah. The apparently, I didn't know this, but apparently, the person, the regime that runs the government, is the Muslim Brotherhood. Hmm. In Egypt, yeah. So, and apparently, like we give them a lot of our weapons. And there's a big, a big like controversy over that or whatever. Um, we've been we give them like Abram tanks and F-16s and stuff. And people are like, why are we giving them these all this stuff when you know they're 
you know, like they, like they can't even maintain a stable government and they're going to fall into the hands of terrorists. Now, I question, what the fuck, what is Osama bin Laden or any terrorist going to do with an F-16? <laughs> be able to figure out how to start it, let alone the maintenance on it, you know? Like, like <laughs> just going to look at it and be like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. But, I don't know. So, yeah, it's pretty much like this, probably like tens of thousands of people, like, you know, riding in the streets. A couple hundred people have died. Like, a couple thousand people have died. Yeah, I, but, I, I am tired of watching ads on my channel. I really don't like that. I don't get paid a dime for anybody watching ads on my channel. I don't really understand why they... Like, YouTube doesn't play ads on my stuff unless I'm, you know, uh, partnered. Like, they, you know, I had a completely ad-free channel. And even now, like, I'm... Um, I only... I only... I think I only enabled the ones that have, like, the skip button because... Uh, I skip most of the ads I watch, so I don't expect people to sit there and watch ads in front of my videos. Although I recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> watch the entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm seriously kidding. If you don't watch the ad, don't watch the ad. What's going on with the carbon poker thing? It's kind of like overlaid over the top of the table. Yeah, we're working on it. We're working on it. Oh, all right. All right, we got Queen. Man, we are hitting some hands today. If we could get the technical side of things worked out, and um, oh wow, this is this is going to be a really gross hand. I'm just going to go ahead and bet big here. I'll get it all in, uh, no matter what, on this hand because we've got a set of queens. We've got outs even if they have the flush. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep betting big. What is going on with the stream? It looks terrible. I mean. <laughs> There we go. It's, it's sorted now, I think. Boom. That's how we do that. Oh, yeah, that... I'm not... Um, you can't... Uh, yeah, let me... All right, so that, that queen's hand worked out fine. Uh, we pretty much just... Like I said, you know, we just want to go bet, bet, bet in situations like that. We're not going to... Uh, we're not going to mess around. We're not going to slow play, anything like that. We just want to get value. Um, and when we hit a set of queens, uh, that's what we want to do. We want to get value. Luckily, the guy called us with um, king two and hit two pair. So we were able to pretty much uh, double up through that guy. And now we are back in the green. And that's how you do it. So, like, here's what happens is you just keep playing strong hands, and eventually somebody calls with a worse hand. And, all right, this is kind of a... This is an interesting theory. I've talked about it a couple times, I think. But there is... Uh, let's see. So there's some something to be said for you getting you uh, a cooler. All right. So when, when, when someone's like, yeah, I got coolered, it means... Um, okay, so in, in the beginning of rounders, all right, when, uh, when he flops like... The uh, he flops the full house versus the quads or whatever. All right, Matt Damon oh, gets uh, the Matt Damon gets the full house and and Teddy KGB gets quads. No, he gets. Uh, or, or no, it's a worse full house, right? Yeah, it's, it's uh, he gets aces full and the other guy has like three full aces, something like that. Right. Yeah. He he, 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 has, he, he has nines full of aces versus the other guy's aces full of nines. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I think that's what it is. So okay, so that's like a uh, you know most people would consider that a cooler. Right um, here, I'm gonna just three bet. Uh, actually, you know what? All these guys are short, so I can just three bet shove this. So the reason I'm, I'm shoving is because these guys are all short. They all have less than a dollar. If I three bet and then they four bet, I can't fold anyway. So I can't fold if I if I three bet and they four bet. So I might as well just four bet and maximize my fold equity. If I get a small pair or something to fold in that spot, it's a good thing. Uh, versus you know when I had the queens, I want them to call, but it sort of plays the same way. Doesn't really make sense, but uh, let me go back to this no, whole cooler. Sense, oh, okay. Let me go back to the cooler thing. So, yeah, people say, "Oh, I got cooler." There's nothing I can do. You know, there's nothing I can do about coolers. Well, uh, the the way I've heard it explained before that makes sense to me is that you can actually play in a way that makes it so you will cooler your opponents more than they will cooler you. Like when you get a, a set of you know threes and you get beat by a set of sevens, that's a cooler. Like, that, that sort of thing happens. When you get the king high flush for someone else's ace high flush, 
you get coolered. However, what I will say is um, you can, you know, if you're playing better hands, you will cooler your opponents more. That guy's playing queen to, uh, king to uh, offsuit. I'm playing queens. Like, I would never get into that pot with king two. So the fact that he flopped a good hand is sort of irrelevant because, you know, the number of times he's going to hit with king two and win are going to be, like, few and far between. And then the times that he hits, sometimes he's going to lose, right? So, like, when people say, oh, you only need seven to one odds to call with a pair um, because that's how often you'll hit a set on the flop. The way I play, uh, and I'm talking implied odds, the way that I play that is I say I need about 20 to 1 to call with a small pair. I need 20 to 1 implied odds because of the, of the times I hit a set, I may, not always, um, I may not always get paid. And then sometimes when I hit a set, I'll lose. And those are really expensive. So that's why like seven to one isn't quite enough. To, wow, that guy folded a king there. That's pretty impressive. Um, that's why I don't think seven enough is really enough uh, to call with because yeah, you may have seven to one implied, but it doesn't really mean anything um, if you're gonna. Some of those you're gonna lose, and some of those you're not gonna get paid. And that's why you want better odds. Uh, you know, with pairs. And then sometimes, wow, I won with sixes, that's nice. Oh, he had, he just had ace high. So, uh, sometimes you will, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, you also have to consider position. You know, you, you can call with slightly worse odds when you're in position than when you're out of position. Because I don't know how many people have hit a set out of position, but it's kind of hard to get paid with a set out of position. So all those little things factor into your overall win rate. And that's all I'm trying to say with the with the king two thing. Like, you know, he probably is like, oh damn, that guy had a set coolered. But I raised preflop. He shouldn't have been in the in the pot with king two, um, and that's why. Is because stuff like that'll happen. So when when I see examples of of the the theories that I talk about and teach, I like to point them out. And that's one of them. You know, if if you're putting yourself in a situation to get coolered a lot. Um, it's going to be, it's just going to be tough. You know, you are going to get coolered, uh, and it's going to be really expensive when you do, you know, this guy ended up getting a full buy-in, uh, stacked where he shouldn't have even been in the hand. Make sense? Yeah, it's hard to read. Yeah. Yeah. It's just really hard to read those kind of people too. Like who would have ever thought in a million years he would have come in with King two, you know, was it even suited? I, I don't remember, but it doesn't really matter. Like, what me trying to put him on a hand wasn't really the point there. Um, yeah, no, I understand. I understand. Yeah. And that's the other thing is sometimes people will just show up with any random hand, and, and I guess you just need to kind of be mentally prepared for that. Because if you're, if you're, like what happened with this, you know, this guy at this live tournament is he was so frustrated that this guy had played poorly against him and won that he then kind of just like, you know, kind of just like did whatever for the rest of his tournament. You know, he got real frustrated when he had three big blinds and raised all in and the button called with like 10-6 offsuit. You know, he thought that was kind of like crazy and it's like, well, I mean, you're getting pretty good odds. <laughs> like you're getting odds. And the tournament had this weird twist where, uh, I forget exactly what you started with, but you had this like blue chip. This was kind of an interesting idea. I actually kind of like this. So you have this blue chip and the way it works is that chip is worth 5,000, like 5,000 chips. Um, but it's not in play until the final table. So what happens is if you've ever played like live tournaments, you know that sometimes you get to the final table and it's just everybody's all in because they're short stacked at that point. You know, they have like 10 to 15 big blinds and so everyone's just shoving all in. So what happens in this tournament is because all the people have like at the final table have probably knocked a few people out, all of a sudden they get these like $5,000 you know, or 5,000 you know, value chips added to their stack uh, when they get to the final table. So the final table plays a little bit deeper. Um, and so it adds kind of an interesting dynamic of knocking people out. And so, I mean, if you've got a, uh, I mean, what is that? That's like three to one odds to call 
uh, somebody's all in, you can pretty much do it with any two cards, especially because of that five thousand dollar, you know, that five thousand chip. It adds kind of an interesting dynamic right, right. to the game. But that guy didn't understand that really, and so he was kind of like, "Oh, how how does my how do my fives get beat by ten six? I'm like, "Well, because it's a coin toss." <laughs> like, <laughs> You know, you're fine. Like, would you be more upset if they lost to Ace King? I mean, it's about the same odds. But that's, I mean, I don't know. I, it, part of it, it just makes me feel, um, it gives me a lot of hope because it tells me that poker is still very beatable. A lot of, um, I remember like a few years ago, people were like, yeah, you know, poker's really drying up. You can't find soft games anymore. Everyone's really good. I'm sure at the high stakes that's true, but I see plenty of people play terribly. And that's not that's not true either. Like that's maybe like online probably pretty stiff, but if you go to like casinos, it's still pretty soft. People go there, they get drunk. They yeah. Want to gamble. It's that's what it's what it's there for. It's there to gamble. So like they say that like online plays about two three uh, like ranges higher than what you're at. So. Four, four would play like 20. Yeah. No all, right. all right. Also, okay, so see how I just folded there? All right, like that hand. All right, perfect example. I had the queen of diamonds. The reason I folded was because I didn't have the ace of diamonds. All right, like I can't, I, like it's like a lot of people would be like, oh, I've got the queen. I can hit the flush. Um, or, you know, I could hit a king or a queen or a flush and like, oh, I've got a bunch of outs. My thinking was, eh, maybe if I had the ace or the king, I would call. But I'm not going to call with what could be a second best hand and, and risk getting coolered. The guy ended up tur turning over and showing that he had ace nine, you know, which is fine. I, don't, I, I wouldn't ever show a hand. But, like, that's my point is that some players might call there with the queen because there's a flush out. And then when they hit the flush and the other guy's got the ace, you know, they made kind of a weak call on a draw, hit their draw, and then still lost. If you're drawing, you want to be drawing to the best hand. Like, you don't want to draw to second and third best hands. That is really expensive. Um, so, you know, that's another way that you can just, you're going to lose a lot of big pots when you, uh, when you shouldn't. Hmm, <laughs> hmm, this guy doesn't really raise much, but I mean, I'm getting, you know, two and a half to one or something uh, with King Jack. And uh, I'll go ahead and check call here. Um, he checks back that flop, which is strange. You know, I'll, I'll just go ahead and bet out to uh, try and get some value from maybe like a, a 10 or a lower hand. And then uh, here, <laughs> uh, well, yeah, if he has a 10, I'll bet half pot and then fold if he raises here. And he just folds, so that's fine. So he was on some kind of draw, or so, I don't know what he was on, but... Um, Crack. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. All right, now we're playing heads up, which isn't really the point of this, so I'll try and find a different table. Unless these guys all come back. And, and I love playing heads up, but it's just a little fast to be playing two tables heads up while talking and everything else, so... Uh, we should do one of these, like, just straight up heads up days. Oh, yeah, I definitely will once I get to 25 no limit. I, I have a bad feeling that I'm going to probably play too much heads up because I enjoy it so much. <laughs> and, like, a lot of players up. don't don't uh, play heads up, so it might be kind of frustrating for them. But if you can learn how to play heads up, that's, I mean, I think it helps you learn a lot because you are just constantly in – you're constantly playing heads up, which is what most pot, most of the time when you're in a pot, it's you and one other guy. That's what it is 90% of the time. So it's just a lot of good practice for that. And it's a, um, you get much, much better at hand reading is kind of the, the bottom line. You just, see, you just see so many hands. Look at that flop, three sixes. All right. Only one person hit that flop. <laughs> All right, I've got a really distressed dog in the room. I think it's going to have to leave. I'll be right back.
wait, wait, don't fold me. Okay, I'll fold that hand. My, okay, mic's on, we're good. All right, I miss anything good? No, no, pretty much uh, standard. All right, what else? What else do we got going on? Um, so yeah, the live play was really entertaining. I enjoyed that. Uh, see what else. Um, the website's going pretty good. Oh, that's a good. Um, yeah, I, I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna pull up a couple different formats for the website, and then uh, maybe some guys in the chat can comment on which one. Because I've got like the format right now is all right. It's not. It's not great. Uh, this guy. I don't really know anything about him, but. We're out of position. I'm gonna go ahead and raise. Oh wait, he raised it to to tw uh, That's only three times. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and raise it up and uh, three bet this guy. I don't know anything about him, but I've got Queen Jack suited. It plays fine. Um, and is that what you is that what you call a squeeze play? No, no, because no, it was. He limped in. He limped, yeah. yeah, he was already. He's a big line. He didn't limp. He yeah, um he just he raised. And now he's three betting, and I'm getting a little better than two to one. But I'm out of position. I'll go ahead and fold. That's fine. Don't uh, don't get wrapped around the axle about when people like four bet your three bets and stuff like that. Honestly, I'll, if they're doing it like really, if they're really out of line and they're really getting crazy, um, then that's okay. But a lot of the times they just have hands. Like I don't have any. I've got three hands on this guy. I don't really know anything about how he's playing or, or anything. So. Uh, to assume that he's just like, kind of playing crazy or getting out of line is um, probably not a good idea. And then this guy overbets the pot, um, but he doesn't have any chips, so I'm just going to shove all in. I think he's probably got diamonds a fair amount here, or like a five. Oh, he's got a better nine. That's brutal. Seven. Okay, well, um, he had ace nine. Uh, that'll happen. And this guy's raising, and this guy that's is... That's what you call getting cool. Cooler. Yeah, I mean, he's so short that uh, that's fine. There's no, not a problem. But that's, I mean, that's like one of the advantages of playing a short stack, I guess. I was just trying to bring back, you know, make it come full circle. <laughs> just trying to... I, I saw, I saw. And I appreciate it. Don't think did. I don't. You see what I did there? Yeah, that was good. Um, but yeah, so like, okay, well, this guy's played all five of the hands he's been in that I've seen. He has been raising, and he raised the flop, and he raised pre-flop. Uh, so he appears to maybe be a little bit aggressive. We'll keep our eye on him. Uh, this player bets out full pot into two other players, so I'll fold on the left. <sighs> Getting three bet again on the right. I'm just going to fold. I do have position. I could maybe call a 10-jack, but it's just I've got, I'm like playing to hit, and then i got to try to bluff the guy, and I don't really know anything about him. He's only played two hands. Um, you know, just, just sort of give up and, and move on. All right. So we're still, we're still, uh, we're still up a little bit. We're actually running, um, below on EV because the thing with the equity is like it, over like 10,000 hands, it may show you if you're maybe running a little bit good or running a little bit bad. Um, maybe if like, if it's showing you're running bad, it, it might indicate that, um, you know, you're, you're just, you just need to keep playing. Um, but it's not something that I would worry too much about because it's only one aspect of running good or bad. Like it's only one part of that equation. And that equation is so like convoluted and complex that I wouldn't, I wouldn't put too, too much stock in it. Um, like I said, that is one part of it. But there's a lot of winnings that you, you make or lose that aren't equity related at all, that aren't gonna have any, any equity associated with them. So, um, it's all, it's just one aspect of, of, of being lucky or unlucky, if you want to put it that way. Like right now, um, you know, mine, I just refreshed, like it says, you know, my equity, I'm up two bucks, but really I'm only up 25 cents. Well, a lot of that came from me having queens against aces. 
All right, so like, yeah, the, the guy had aces, I had queens. I mean, that doesn't mean that I'm running bad because I didn't win there. Like, running queens into aces <clears throat> is kind of running bad because it happened. But, uh, you know, 20% of that pot is mine because 20% of the time I will win there. And so it's saying like, oh, you should have won, you know, two more dollars this session. Well, kind of. <laughs> like, yes, I mean, technically, some of that, you know, equity in that pot should have been mine. But it's like, okay, my, my ace has lost to queens. That doesn't mean that, you know, I should be making a lot more money. But the, equi the equity charts, though, are not going to take into account. It will, it will look at you losing, getting all in with queens against aces negatively. It will lower, it will say you should have lost more right? Because you got money in when you were behind. Like, it, it's saying, it's saying... The way the equity chart works, right, is like if you get money in when you're ahead, but you still lost because he sucked out on you, then then it says, okay, you're making, like you should have made this, whatever. Like you should have made that money, but you actually lost it, so your equity is higher. But getting queens in against aces, like that's a negative. I mean, that looks bad, so it's, that's no. not going to affect you. That's going to make it go down because you should have lost that because you got money in behind. No, no. That, I, I lost that hand, but it's saying that I should have won you know, a dollar or something from that hand, a dollar 68. So my equity difference is a dollar 68. So when I got my Queens in against aces, it's saying, you know what? A dollar 68 of that pot was actually yours. So it's saying that my equity is now up a dollar 68. Is that because 20% you'll hit a queen? Sometimes? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's unbiased. It's unbiased either way you go, but it's only one part of the game. Like it doesn't consider like if you don't get aces for you know five hundred hands or a thousand hands, it doesn't take that into account. Or if you get aces like you know four times in a session, it doesn't take that into account. It also doesn't take into account if you get kings versus aces a bunch of times. Like it only is measuring one factor. Like a better measure would be what's called Skolansky bucks, which is like it takes every street of play and says okay. Did you bet this street when you were ahead? Did you bet this street when you were ahead? And it essentially does that for every every hand that goes to showdown. So let me give you an example. So let's say from MIT, so maybe let's yeah. let's say that um <laughs> damn it, and this guy three bets me again. So let's say that uh I bet like um and four betting like tens there is actually uh, fine. Like small, small to medium pairs play pretty well against like ace king, ace queen stuff like that. Um, so I, I don't mind that play at all. Ace eight offsuit in the cutoff. Yeah, we can we can raise that. All right. So for an example hand, let's say that I've got you know aces uh, versus kings, and I bet. Anyway, we're playing two two cent, four cent. And, you know, I bet pre-flop he calls. I bet the flop he calls. I bet the turn he calls. All right, let's say that the pot is now $6 and we each have a dollar behind. Okay, Just tracking on this? Yeah. Did you play your ace eight, eight, eight? Yeah, I'll, I'll call here. This guy did this before, and I have no idea what he had. So him leading out pot, I'm not sure what that indicates. But... I, Try to play a little pot control here. Uh, he bets 36 again, so um, I'm probably just going to call down. I would expect to check a fair amount of the time on the full, on the river uh, after that small turn bet. Uh, I don't really know what he can have here. This is really strange play. I I'm just going to call, find out what he's doing. Uh, he could have an ace a lot of times here. I just I'm just not sure. Oh, okay. That makes perfect sense. Ugh, okay. <laughs> oh, well. Um, all right, so we bet the flop, we bet the turn, and now we each have a dollar behind, right? So the river is a king, and now our aces get sucked out on. So now, or sorry, so... The, the turn's a king. Turns a king and the river was a king. No, 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 no. I'm talking about in our metaphorical hand. 
Oh, okay. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like, let's say that um, we we get like six dollars in, and of the you know we put in six bucks or you know we each put in three dollars and we had aces and he had kings. Then a king comes on the river. Okay. And okay. so he has a set of kings and we have a pair of aces. And that last dollar goes in. How much equity do we get out of that pot? Like how much, what's our EV going to say that we're, we did? All right. It's not going to say anything. It's going to say zero. There's no EV difference or, or no, yeah, there, it's going to say zero because there was, there were no cards to come. So that last bet that we went all in, he had the, the hand locked because it was the river. There were no more cards to come. There was no way that we could win at that point. So even though we put six uh, $3 in when we were way ahead, the fact that that last dollar went in behind means not going to change our equity at all because there's no way that we could, we could suck out. There's no, there's no equity difference there. Right. You see what I'm saying? So even though we put in a ton of money when we were good and a little bit of money when we were behind, um, it's going to look, it's going to look like we didn't run bad that session. It's not going to indicate that we ran bad in any way during that session. Right. Okay. So I'm just saying that there are a lot of limitations of that equity stat. And that's why I don't, I don't think it should be, you know, factored in too much. That's really my only point with that. You see this? I'm pretty sure dark, darkest mage is, is uh, stream sniping you. That is the name of one of the magic players on Twitch. I'm pretty sure if it isn't him. Huh. All right. Well, I'll make sure I play quickly. Just keep an eye on him. Mm -hmm. He starts counting down. <clears throat> thanks for the heads up. Appreciate yeah, it. thanks. <clears throat> Anyone else like name match the gathering like names? <laughs> Fucking morons. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna try to do it, I mean, come on, come on. <laughs> like, your name might be poker sniper, you know, like Twitch sniper. I saw a guy that had like a poker something poker name. Yeah, he's three bet me a couple times, that's for sure. And the one time you, you answered back and you pulled it. Yeah, and I had tens. I remember you were saying, like, I wonder what this guy's, like, waiting for. I don't know what he has, you know? Yeah. Douchebag. Yeah, I don't know about that, but... <clears throat> I always think the worst in people. <laughs> Which is usually accurate. <laughs> yeah. That's usually a good starting point. Go from there. <laughs> Whole cards grid. What is that? Oh, nice. This is cool. This is my whole cards grid. So it shows uh, the most money I've won and the most I've lost. Boom. Queens. <laughs> this is a, a good tool. I mean... This is only for this session, I think, though. Look at all your best hands are all... Oh, no, I guess not. No, no, but... Um, Ooh, Queen he's... Jack. Queen's... King Queen's bad, too. Yeah, but that's just this session. So if I go to... Um, buy stakes, and then I do that, and then... If I go to buy stakes, now I've got 3,000 hands returned. Uh, still kind of interesting results, but look, pocket pairs are usually pretty good. So I think in general, I just need to play queens more like a small pocket pair, and then I'll do fine. Then I'll win money like with jacks. Wow, I wish I could switch these flops. I told you, man, they should do that. <laughs> <laughs> that should be an option. Add a whole dynamic to the play, like switch your cards. Yeah, that'd be really frustrating. <laughs> I don't know why I lost, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, 
So Verlo242 said he stopped playing Carbon earlier because he knew you were coming on. Uh, hopefully that was because you wanted to watch the show. <laughs> not because you were, you were afraid that you'd be tempted to snipe him. <laughs> <laughs> no, Verlo's like, uh, man, I think he was like my second... Uh, subs he was like my fourth subscriber. My four, my first, no, like my fifth. All right, number one, two, and three were my different accounts, and then, uh, and then uh, you and uh, you know my my significant other were like four and five, and then and then was Rello. He came in a, a strong, strong right after that. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. Oh my gosh, look at these guys are crazy. Appreciate the uh, the repeat business. <laughs> And it makes it a lot more interesting when there's people that like are engaging. Um, and uh... yeah, no, it does. I think the uh, I think the changing of the name is definitely impacting the the, the amount of viewers on the stream right now. Because you changed it from Magic the Gathering to oh yeah 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 definitely, but that's all right. We got, uh, I'm going to go for like another 40 minutes because we started like 20 minutes late. I don't know. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's go ahead and change it back, and then uh, we'll see if uh, we'll see how that works. I know it'll increase, but I want to be able to stream. Like what I want is to get, it's just so hard because nobody else is doing this. Um, but my... One of your limiting factors is not the is not the show is good or bad. It's just that getting people to know about it. So you want it in like a high visited channel. Like if I were you, I would put it on MSNBC. You know, and there's you do with poker, but there's no MSNBC channel on Twitch. I'm just saying, <laughs> I was, as a reference, I would put it on something. I would put it on Comedy Central. This is not funny, you know, but it's you know, it is kind of funny sometimes. But well, my um. You want you just want a high like a highly popular area, a highly viewed area. Right, right, but if you put it on like League of Legends or something, you're you're gonna be way at the bottom anyway. I mean, Magic at least it gets seen. My my point is is that a lot of players might want to a lot of people may want to watch this that aren't gonna be in the Magic the Gathering channel. So that that's sort of like. Um, yeah, we were playing on Bovada like a. Probably like two weeks ago, switched over to Carbon. Bavada doesn't have right back and then doesn't have the use of a HUD. And the main reason why I switched over to Carbon was to do the sit and goes to do the uh, zero to hero, hero challenge. But well, that and it was just a good opportunity well. to restart my bankroll and do do the channel, do the do the challenge. Yeah, Carbon is getting rid of its right back program. And, uh, yeah, they so. still the rake back is actually better at carbon if you're in the highest VIP level, but you have to put in a ton of volume to get there. In fact, I wonder if it's even really possible because <laughs> well, because of their their they don't have a ton of players. Like that's their biggest thing. I almost want to try out lock. The stuff that I've heard bad about lock poker is like a little bit about its customer service and hold on, I'm going to sneeze, so I'm going to mute the mic. I would say a lot about its software. Its software is pretty terrible. I definitely did not like it. Yeah, it's not but. the it's not the best. I, it's it's Cake's old software pretty much, which I've played on before, so it's it's not that it's not that weird. But uh, um, you know the 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 thing about it is it has a lot more players, and so that's like an advantage of an in and of itself. Like you know, Carbon, I see the same guys at every table, even at four no limit. If you go on like Poker Stars, I, I, I mean, I, I can't go on Poker Stars because I'm a U.S. player, but I mean, there are, like, I remember back, you know, back in the day, there would just be hundred, like, just, you know, like a thousand players at this level. I feel like at the, on Carbon, there's maybe like 30 people playing, you know, 30, like, different people playing on, on this level versus, you know, like four or five hundred, six hundred, a lot, a lot more. Um, so... How does that compare to B Bovada, though? You said Bovada was very small, but you didn't really see that many people, or you just didn't recognize them as well. Yeah, it's hard, yeah, you can't even recognize them at all. <laughs> no idea how many people there were. There's no names. 
Exactly. Okay. So that's like, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> my thoughts are now coming together yeah yeah it was really hard but i mean the one thing i liked about that is i could be super lazy about note taking and i mean until like until you have a read on a guy and you have to make sure you know if he is the player that you know just left or the one that just came or whatever else like that's another thing that's annoying is you'll be like oh yeah last time this guy three bet me like a few times and then you realize like wait a minute did he get up and leave or is this a new guy? Like you don't, you know, if you don't notice a guy leaving, you'll, you know, if you didn't take a note on him immediately, then uh, you won't know. So it's, I, I don't know, it's interesting, but it makes it kind of like you can, you can play a lot more straightforward. I mean, you can kind of play by a hand chart, play standard until you may or may not get a read on somebody. So, I mean, that's, that's good and bad. It's uh. <clears throat> I mean, on, on this site, like, I can adjust the players a little bit, but that can, if you do that incorrectly, it can be, it can be worse. Let me go to sessions. All right, so I'm still, still only down, like, $1.24. We can battle back here. We can definitely, yeah, so, yeah, the magic, the magic channel is definitely better, but... <laughs> <laughs> instant, instant increase. <laughs> yeah. Darn it. Oh well. I'm sure at some point I'll be like, I, it's just hard. Like you need to have you know, in the ballpark of like a hundred, hundred or two hundred people watching or whatever to even be relatively high up on the overall channel or game list. What you know, it'd be cool if there was like one or two other people streaming poker, and then like the channel would maybe have more overall viewers and could get higher ranked, but. Doesn't, uh, doesn't work. All right, so to me, and that's the thing I've heard about lock poker, is like, oh, it takes like six weeks to get your money off. Um, to me, that's not that big a deal. Like, if they're, if they're mailing me a check, um, it doesn't really bother me if it takes as long as it as long as it gets there. If I'm cashing out regularly, let's say like every month I order a check. If that check comes like in six weeks and it's consistently coming in six weeks, uh, I don't really have an issue with that because after like two months, it's pretty transparent. I just get a new check in the mail every month, and it's not that big a deal. This is what did this guy have last time when he did this to me? Oh, uh, King Two. No. That's Open limps. I haven't seen a I haven't seen a showdown with this guy. Oh, uh, you must have got up then. King Jack is uh Darn it. Oh well. Oh well. <sighs> Short stackers are kind of a pain. I probably could have folded there, but I mean, there's a good chance that he has um, close to nothing a lot of times. And I mean, it's only 50 cents. I'm getting decent odds. It's hard to fold an ace there against a short stacker. I don't know if it would be better to have folded or not, but... So I also have uh, streaming capability on YouTube, but I'm not sure. I haven't had a chance to test it out, uh, so I need to see how the YouTube streaming works. If there's, a, I think there's like a natural minute and a half delay on YouTube, which isn't really an issue for me. Um, I'd be more concerned if there was no delay. But there's a. Uh, I haven't tried it out, so I don't know what the quality is like. I've heard the quality is a little worse. Um, I, I, I don't know, but we'll see. I mean, I, to me, you know, we'll see which one is uh, works out better. But I'll probably try out both, and uh, and see which one people like. Doesn't really matter to me. I'll I'll, I'll do whatever. But uh, whatever more people are, whatever more people find convenient, or more people uh, feel like tuning into, I guess, is the one I'll do. Yeah, I'm 
we need some hands. I wanna, I wanna be able to have a, uh, a profitable session. So I'm up to three thousand. Uh, so let's do. Uh, Let me do this math real quick. Um, 900 minutes by 3,000 hands. So how many hands an hour am I getting? And how many more hours until I get 25,000 hands? That's the question. 900 divided by 60. Yeah, 960 carry the one. Uh, I guarantee you could have a calculator pulled up on your computer within it, three seconds. It's 15. Okay, so 15 hours. So Jeez. 3,000 over 50. 15. 200 hands per hour. No, it's, it's exactly 3,000 divided by 15. It's 200. Oh, okay. So, so 200 hands an hour? Really? Yeah. That's brutal. Can it be higher or lower? Uh, I'd like it to be a little higher. <laughs> Was it 200 hands on an average? Is the right with your four tabling? Well, no, because a lot of mine is two tabling. You like right now? I'm, I've been two tabling for about two hours, and, and I mean, a lot of mine is two tabling stuff because I do it for videos. What I need to do is kind of play on my own without recording or streaming or doing anything or recording, but using it as like a, a session review video. So I'm this weekend. I'm gonna put in probably like 10 hours. Hopefully, I'm gonna put in a bunch of time. So what's this say? The da, da, da. I wasn't. I was actually using a calculator. Ah. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. See, that's also a good point there. The sticky hands. He said that the way to like get more players is basically just be on Twitch all the time, to get more viewers. Yeah. So people. So, but. That's not really an option because you have a, a job. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I could do more. Like I've got a um, over on two plus two. I have a forum where I upload a lot of my videos, and it's like in the video forums. But it's kind of like a hidden forum. There aren't that many people on it, and I don't want to like be spamming stuff and, and obnoxious about it because like that's not. I, that's I don't know. That's just not my style. I don't I don't want to be annoying or or spammy about my stuff. So. Uh, to an extent, like I do some of that, but yeah, I could probably do a little bit more um, and do it. Uh, do it and, shamelessly. Put it on people's like you know, on their uh, shields, like. Their, uh, <laughs> yeah, you could walk around the parking lot with a flyer. And, like, house doors and stuff. And yeah. Well, people will just begin to hate you. You know. <laughs> that worked out pretty well that one day. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? One day. <laughs> You did that? Wait. Yeah, I mean, I guess, uh, no, I mean, you think, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's still, it's still annoying. I mean, I don't know, like, you're right. I mean, I don't care one way or the other, but I, yeah, I guess I said annoying. I don't really mean annoying. It's just. I don't know. It just is. It's annoying that I lost. Am I allowed to be annoyed that I lost money? <laughs> like I, I'll go with that. Um, yeah, the ghosting thing doesn't really concern me too much. If if I think that's going on, I can just increase the delay on the on the stream, and and uh, that'll be that. I mean, especially like on especially on carbon. I mean, you don't have that much time to act anyway. Um, on the regular speed tables, you do, but it's still not that much. I mean, what like you get? It feels like maybe ten seconds on your regular timer, and then a ten second time bank. I mean, that's just not that much time. You get twenty seconds, uh, you know, and then ten seconds on each round. So the most you can delay for, I'd say, is like thirty, maybe fifty seconds. You could maybe delay a hand for like fifty seconds. Um, so if I put a minute or a minute and a half delay on, there's just no way that you're going to be able to see what, what's going on unless I'm playing really slow also, which I try not to do too much. Uh, doo -doo -doo. we'll see about this. We'll probably continue betting now that we hit the set. Um... 
Yeah, I'll bet out pretty big here. Um, I do want to get that. Oh, really? That is not a great card for me. Hard to get value here now from a worse hand, so I'll just check it back. He's got the he's got the straight flush. So uh, nice hand. <laughs> that guy just <laughs> that guy just hit a straight flush blind versus blind against my set, and he won a dollar and sixty cent pot. So <laughs> I'm pretty happy about that. I uh, I think I got away from that about as cheap as possible. Man, you get you guys are way more aggressive about this than I am. <laughs> hey, Sharky, there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I see our bridge between the posts there. Yeah, they're really all about like you know, shameless promotion. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to work on that. I don't know. I need a. Uh, I guess I, I need a like a marketing some marketing help. I actually uh, met a girl like, the other day. She, her job is basically Facebook marketing. Really? She works at home. Yeah, she works at home, and that's all she does. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I it's thought it like you know you can buy things. pretty you can buy pretty cheap ads, but I could not figure out like I actually thought about doing that with one of my videos, just like paying like thirty bucks, like thirty bucks to get one of them on YouTube or something, just to just to you know get it out there so more people see it. I could not figure out how to just do like a featured search, like a search ad where it just shows up at the top of search. That's all I wanted. I just, I didn't want to throw it. I didn't want it to be in like a stream. I didn't want anything. Just, just, I wanted it like to be one of those grayish ones that say like featured video at the top of the search. Couldn't figure out how to do it. <laughs> could not like all it oh, yeah. wanted to do is make it like a, an in stream ad, like a, like one of those, pre-roll ads and I'm like that's not what that no that's not <laughs> it's like not what I'm trying to do here um yeah so I don't know how that works and then Facebook I could kind of figure it out but Facebook was like way more complicated about it so I don't know I might I might do that but it's uh like I don't know to me that's not that much like if I spent like I don't know 50 to 100 bucks like total just trying to kind of put it out there like once every six months or something I mean that'd be cool I, I just really want to uh, build like a like a cool community on the website that can talk about hands. I was talking about it earlier a little bit in the stream, but I mean there are definitely plenty of forums out there. But I feel like they're very even for me it's like a little intimidating to go on and post on a lot of those like forums. It's just kind of um, why did it, why did it just raise to eleven cents? Uh, it's just a little bit like intimidating because there's a lot of players that are, there are people that have just been posting on there for years that have thousands of posts and, um, you know, you go on there with little to no experience or, you know, just kind of new to the scene. It's just a little intimidating. So I kind of wanted to create like a smaller community for new players that, you know, could ask kind of like the, the quote unquote dumb questions. Um, and, uh, and have like a, I don't know, a cool little smaller community feeling to it. Um, so that's what what's kind of trying to go on there. And actually, I think it's going pretty well. I mean, I can't, I, I'm not complaining at all. It's, it's pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, I'd be, I'd be open to the idea yeah. of, I'd be open to the idea of trying to put it out there more. I just, I guess part of it is also, I don't want to try to put something out there if I don't think it's really good. Right now, you said set a weekly streaming time and session experience. Right now, we do it, you know, every every Friday night between eight and ten Eastern Standard Time. So, I know with someone here was from like Croatia and stuff, so that pretty much probably means nothing to them, but, uh, since the time so so far off. But uh, yeah, we, we do try to keep it scheduled, jumping through the technical difficulties that we've kind of been having, but. Um, Every Friday night, Eastern Standard Time, 8 to 10. If you like the show, come back and check us out. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, yeah, it'd be really hard to do another time during the week except for, like, Saturday night. But I don't know if that's – I mean, we could do that. I don't know. I'd have to clear that with uh, with someone other than myself because – Also, this Sunday afternoon, if you got nothing going on, 
we'll probably be uh, live streaming here. So if you're not doing anything, we will. With the Super Bowl. No, I'm just, just trying to say, competing with the Super Bowl, you know, so I expect lots of, lots of people oh, watching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, I got top pair here, so I can just kind of bet out for value. There's a ton of draws that can call, um, so I'll just make a, like a three-quarter pot bet. I, when I have a hand, I like to bet a little bit more. It's really obvious, and so if like people who, you know, really know that that's what I do, and I, I try to exploit that. Um, <laughs> I just need to amp up my ego. I'll work on that. I'd feel a little better about that if I was like killing, killing 4NL. <laughs> what, did your, your, what did someone say about your ego? Yeah, I need to amp it up a little bit. Oh, amp up the ego a little bit. I told him that he should do something like Kramer from, uh, uh, what's it called? It? Seinfeld? Oh. No, oh. Kramer, uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Say a little more about it, like, like all in and like get really excited about it and have like background effects and everything, so. Hopefully I can convince him to kind of work that in. I, I'm, I'm working on it. I've got, I've got, uh, here, watch this. This is all I've got right now is my intro. I can do my intro. Oh, the one with the bear is coming across the screen, roaring. Oh, like yeah, this. yeah, the, the bear market thing. Oh, God. So, so, so. I just broke it. Well, it's still working. You got king. See that? <laughs> so I can do that. I mean, that's kind of cool. I didn't see it. Oh, you will. <laughs> oh, because it's, it's delayed. <laughs> yeah, you'll see it on. Yeah, yo, you will. You will try. Is it? Is it? Is it uh, just going it's exceptional the rounder. <laughs> No, I, I do, what, what I did is I took my unexceptional rounder thing and I had a logo that was like UR and I kind of, like I'm kind of toying with this whole rounder university idea because I think that's way cooler if like, say I was <laughs> like, you know, like it just won't make sense. Like, oh, like rounder university. It's like a website you go to learn about poker. That kind of makes more sense than unexceptional rounder. That, that sounds kind of unimpressive, I'll admit. But the whole idea behind that name Seven, eight, nine, ten, almost there. Um, the whole idea behind that name is that like, like I, I've gotten pretty good at poker just from like practicing, reading books, you know, all that other stuff. Um, no money in four and L. Everyone's solid. Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if they're really solid. Would they? Would they be playing like? higher stakes. Maybe this is what I've been doing wrong the whole time. Maybe all the good players are in 4 L and all the really bad ones are in, you know, 50 L. Yeah, that's probably what it is. Yeah, I think so. I'm going to bump up and see if I can reduce my losses. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what was I going to say? Um, damn, I will say these guys are aggressive. Mindset. You're talking about the unexceptional rounder. Yeah, I've got my I've got my intro, but I could do that with other stuff theoretically. I don't know. I just need to I just need to work it into the whole the whole thing. Get there. Oh, boom! I can see it now. <laughs> Coming live. All right. So, what? I don't know. Does anyone know how to? Be, okay. So I've got I, I use the, the 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 beta the beta Twitch page. I have no idea what to do with the other one. Like, no no clue what that's supposed to look like. Wow, I'm, again, like, people raise really small when they 3-bet sometimes. Um, so, like, if somebody's going to 3-bet really small, it's hard not to call. Like, you've got pretty good odds to call. And then he bets pot. Um, it's a really strong bet. I mean, he could have ace-king a fair amount here, but king-queen, I'm definitely going to call at least one street. And this guy appears to be, like, pretty aggressive. Uh, I mean, I'll probably just call down here. You know, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, if he's got aces, if he's got ace-king, uh, it's going to be hard to get away from it. Damn. I would get away. Uh, I don't know. Oh, 
What was he thinking? Uh, I was nervous, man. Like, I hate it when I'm making, like, a big call and there's people watching. Because, like, if he just flips over aces or ace-king, I just look like a complete idiot. But when he flips yeah. over a complete bluff, I'm, it's just, like, fucking pff, genius. Like, soul read. <laughs> like, I mean, I fucking big baller. That's how we roll. <laughs> I put him on, like, a... Yeah, like, a... Because he's just, like, bet, 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 bet the whole street down. Like, at some point in time, you just got to be like, okay... He's not going away, you know? <laughs> like, you would have gone away, though. He would have gotten you to fold. I would have folded away before that, bro. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> I'm not saying it was the right, right play, but I probably would have folded on the, on the turn. Probably would have fallen one street and folded, but I'm not saying that's right. But. I feel like when the bluffs aren't working, he, he probably should have done that. Considering all in really wasn't that much anymore, you know? All in was only two bucks. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Like he didn't, he didn't make the all-in move worth anything. Uh, I mean, he did. He bet two twenty-three into three seventy-two. I mean, that's a big bet. I can. That's two-thirds pot. I could definitely get away from that if I uh, if I thought he was always good there. But there's a flush draw out there that's possible. There's like uh, some straight draws out there that are possible. And um, I think and, and like the here's the thing: is what did the board do? Like unless he has a set of kings or a set of tens. It's just, okay, sometimes he's going to have, like, a set of kings, a set of tens. Um, Ace-king's kind of hard to have, right? Because I have a king. Aces are the only other possible hand. Um, and, like, aces just aren't that, that aren't that common. So it's like he has this big range, this kind of biggish range of, like, bluffs to maybe he's overvaluing, like, another type of hand. And then, um, uh... Like, there's some other stuff like that. But, I, I mean, it's just hard for him to have, like, a hand a lot there. I don't, I don't know. Like, how often does he play? It's either he, he is, his range is what's called um, polarized, all right? It's either really, really good or a bluff. And when he goes bet, bet, bet like that, it's like, I don't know. It's just hard to put him on a hand that makes a ton of sense. Um, I don't know. And were we in position? I think we were in position also. So it makes it a little easier to play. So we'll make the note and we'll move on. <laughs> Buddy list. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how to do that. Add as friend. There we go. Wait, a friend request? Whoops. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you just said I'm a friend request? <laughs> you just said I'm a friend request? That's not... Oh, God. Cancel. Cancel. No, no. Let him, let him accept it. Who gives a shit? <laughs> He's going to be like, what? This guy wants to be my friend. Oh, player color. Green? What does that do? Oh wow, that is really noticeable. Let's tone that down just a little, little bit, a little hard on the eyes. Holy crap, that is a that is noticeable. You can hey do the, no do this one here. Go to uh, right click on it and put add icon. You can add a fish on him. No, he already has a fish based on his stats. No, but you can write uh, uh, whatever. See this fish? Oh oh, you can do um. As a note, you can right click, put add. Ah, fish. Okay. Yeah, add a uh, icon. Yeah, yeah, I got it. So he's also got the he's got the other that like hold a manager. I already put a fish on this guy. <laughs> but what I wanted to do is add to buddy. I guess there's no buddy list. There's a friend list, but I don't really. Man, ever since you switched the streams, it exploded. Oh, we were okay. So we were out of position on the hand. You hear what I said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I don't like it, but I know it's true. Yeah, we probably would have been. Uh, we probably would have been. In, wow, this is quite a flop. You guys, I, I mean, like we like a check raise here. Or I guess we just bet, huh? I mean, we were the pre-flop raiser. We'll just see bet. We'll make it big. We'll just go bet, bet, bet if he calls. But I mean, either like that's one of those flops. Either he's got something or he doesn't. 
I, I mean, that sounds kind of silly when I say it, but but either he's got a hand that he wants to play or he's not going to the entire hand. Like, he's not going to turn, like, a five and be like, oh, sweet, my five, six is good now. Like, it's not – either he's going to turn, like, a set and then that's going to be kind of ugly or um, – or he's just he's not he's not gonna play that hand. So when the flop is high like that over on that right hand table where we have like the ace ace queen get whatever the flop was, um, you just gotta bet and either he's gonna have something or he doesn't. Realign these tables. Right. What's going on in the chat? Have you checked that out or what? I haven't looked at it yet. <sighs> that sounds like a good par project for uh, Shark Slayer. Working on that, that Twitch background template. That sounds like something he'd be really good at. Twitch background template? Yeah. What does that even mean? Like a like a whole like kind of theme background? Like a I'm not really good at anything. <laughs> be being entirely honest. I've been spending hours and hours trying to learn how to use Photoshop better. I want to switch from Sony Vegas to Adobe After Effects, but it's making me rip my hair out. Um, trying to set up a website has made me want to rip my hair out. Even though I'm using like WordPress, like I always want to do like the cooler stuff, and I could probably make something really simple, but it's just hard to it's hard to be, it's hard to settle for that. So, oh, that was the other thing I was gonna do. I was gonna show you guys the different WordPress themes, the BuddyPress WordPress themes that I have available and see which one you guys uh, think would be best. I think I've already decided though. I'm gonna go with that one that wasn't uh, that wasn't the rate it one, but the other one that was for videos. And that way all my posts will show up as like videos. So my front screen will be just like a bunch of videos. And then you can click to see like the different blog posts that aren't uh, videos and stuff. Uh, here, pretty good flop. I mean, yeah, the, the clubs are kind of messy, but we've got an over pair and it's blind versus blind. He min raises, that's fine. I'm going to call and try to hope to not see another club. And then we'll probably just check call down and avoid clubs. Uh, if there's a club that comes out, we'll, we'll probably be in a little bit of trouble. That's that's fine. Uh, we're, we're just going to uh, check call this river probably regardless of how big it is. Yeah, so that's fine. Um, okay, he had top pair, so that's a weird... Probably make a note there, right? He... Um, Um, it's not a really good kicker. Uh, all right, so that's kind of an interesting note, right? That he he like uh, he raised our our bet, you know, blind versus blind with top pair weak kicker. I mean, not weak kicker, kind of like medium kicker. Um, kind of interesting. Yeah, if uh, I mean, not to spoil it, but there is like a short delay to, you know, protect myself from ghosting. It's not, not too long, but um, I do use uh, some amount of delay to discourage people from trying to see my hands while they play against me because that wouldn't really be that fun for um, pretty much 95 to 99 percent of the people it would really only be fun for that one guy <laughs> maybe I don't know I guess it'd be kind of entertaining but uh, I'm gonna try to avoid things like that let's refresh oh boom we're back in the green and that's gonna call it a show uh, we'll end there and uh, you guys have a good day <laughs> no, I'm just, just kidding we can go for a little bit longer Yep, yep. From now on, guys, I'll probably just start it up in the Magic the Gathering channel because uh, that's that's where we get people viewing it, and it's more like interesting it. with more people in the chat. The show got a little slow there in the middle. I apologize for that. So we'll maybe go a little bit longer today. Additionally, the next thing on my agenda for today is uh, going to the grocery store, which... Um, is one of my favorite things to do, but if I have to delay it a little bit, that's a sacrifice I will make for the viewers. You go to like a, what's that 24 hour grocery store you go to? Yeah, that's the one. It's called Super, it's called Super Walmart. <laughs> <laughs>
Man, that place, remember remember down in Florida how packed that place was? Like, you'd go in there at, like, 1 a.m., and it was just bustling. <laughs> Same thing in, uh, I was, lived in Hanford, California, which most people probably won't know where that's at, but it's in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah, it's very popular all the time. <laughs> really, really busy. It was the only thing that was there in the entire city. There was, like, a library, uh, like, a post office, and then, like, a uh, Walmart, and... Pretty much kicked the shit out of the library and the post office. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to always. Lo- I used to love going to like Walmart in the middle of the night when I was, you know, depressed and couldn't sleep. I'd just go there and buy Blu-rays, and then it'd make me happy. Yeah, Blu-rays or video games. Yeah. Uh, a lot. Many times have I been at Walmart at like midnight, being like, "Do you have the release?" Never <laughs> thinks to go to those kind of places. They always like get the release for like game. They go to like a. Uh, you know, GameStop or some crap like that. You know, they go to a game store. But like, yeah. Like, I, I remember, like, when the Wii first came out and I went to go buy a Wii. I, the place, they were all sold out everywhere. The place that actually had the most of them, Toys R Us. Huh. Most people don't think to go buy video games at Toys R Us, you know? Oh, yeah. Go to buy, like, you know, games for ki- like kids, you know? Yeah, yeah. Kind of like, yeah. I don't know. But, yeah, it was very easy, so. Wow, that's really interesting. I don't know. That's why you brought in the show. <laughs> Dropped a couple viewers on that, but that's okay. They haven't even seen it yet. They haven't even heard this yet, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> there was some your other rant there with uh, the whole Walmart grocery shopping thing. Oh, maybe. Okay, yeah, you're yeah. probably right. All right. That's so, uh, <laughs> damn it, that's a good point. Um, I don't. I don't really like. I don't really use a stop loss that much i mean i definitely don't use a wind stop and i wouldn't really re- recommend using one uh what i would say is like you could use like a table a table wind stop like let's say that you're either playing on a little bit of a short bankroll or you don't feel comfortable playing like 200 or 255 big blinds deep um uh, like i wouldn't um thanks man have a good one <laughs> What is that? What emo test set? What the fuck is this? I don't know what that is, but um, uh, some weird text in the chat. But uh, what was I saying? What was I talking about? Uh, grocery shopping at Walmart. No. And, uh, it was thanks, man. The guy leaving and an emo test. Yeah. No. Before that, in the in the middle there. Oh, stop, yeah, stop, little, stop and win loss strategy. Okay. Right yeah, stop and win loss strategies. Yeah, I was at some point talking about poker. That's cool. So the um what I would say is if you don't feel comfortable playing like two hundred big blinds deep, then don't. Um there's no reason you need to force yourself to play uh, really deep, but keep in mind if everyone else at the table has four bucks and you have eight dollars, you're still only playing a t- hundred big blinds deep. Um, but like, let's say that the guy to your immediate left has, you know, 10 bucks and you have $8. I, if you don't feel comfortable playing with a deep stack, I would get away from that table because you've got the one guy that covers you uh, that has position on you. On the other hand, like me playing deep with this guy to my right that has 923, I'm fine with that because I feel like I can probably, uh, play all right against him and I have position on him. So when you have position on the, on the big stack, that's generally a good thing. If the big stack has position on you, that's generally a bad thing. Um, so that's that's one way to judge it. So what I would do is, if you don't feel comfortable, you can definitely move tables. But as far as an overall win loss stop, I don't I don't really use that too much. If I feel like I am playing bad, I will stop. Um, but that's something that you know I can kind of recognize, and I've got you know indicators that that kind of tell me when or not, you know, when I am or am not uh, playing well or playing poorly. So if I feel like I'm playing real bad, I'll just stop and, um, you know, go do something else. And that's one thing that's awesome about just playing casually for fun and not being a professional. When I played over the summer uh, one year and I was kind of playing for like my full-time, my full-time money, I was playing like 50 NL. Uh, Having a bad day, like I just had to kind of keep going. And sometimes that would get kind of ugly. So 
I definitely prefer playing casually because if you're having a bad day, you can just stop playing, uh, which is nice. Um, whereas if you're playing for your, you know, money for food, you feel pretty obligated to keep playing. Well, when I have bad days, I stop eating also, so. There you go. Like an emotional girl. I yep. Yep. That's good. So let's see. Now we've got a nice big, uh, winning hand. Our, our biggest hand today is still a loss. It's still our queens versus aces. Um, that's all right, though. And actually, even though, here's the funny thing, even though we're only up like 66 cents right now, if you look, our, our win rate is still, um, you know, four point, right now I'm looking at like 4.4 uh, big blinds per 100 hands, which is a really small win rate. That's only like two big bets per 100 hands. Um, but it's still like a win rate, you know, it's still a decent rate of winning. So like, that's another thing. You're not always going to have sessions that are up like four or five, six bucks. Y you know, that's not always going to be the case. Sometimes you'll just grind a few hundred hands and, and be up, you know, 70 cents. And then you look and you're like, oh, well, that's kind of my standard win rate. So cool. <laughs> it's not, it's not a big deal. Did I fold jacks? I don't know. I said yeah, folding jacks. I didn't. I didn't see you fold jacks. I don't think I folded jacks. You did earlier, a long time ago. Maybe he's folding jacks. Oh. Oh yeah, maybe. Uh, on this left table here with the kings, I'm just gonna go ahead and bet here. Um, he calls. We do get a good turn, uh, which is nice. I'm just going to go ahead and bet half pot. We'll try to get all in here by the river, which should be easy because this guy's pretty short. There are straights out there. There are flushes out there. I'm never folding. Uh, I hope all that's clear. <laughs> <laughs> that's aggressive. I like it. <laughs> He's got two diamonds. King, queen. Pretty much ahead the whole time. Right? I mean, we were ahead on that hand every single street. Head on the flop, head on the turn, head on the river. Um, and that's how we make the brownies. That's how we make the, the sausage. What's the term? What's that phrase? Yeah. yeah. Sausage and, and bring home the bacon. Uh, yeah. I brownies involved in that anywhere. Yeah. Well, you know what? I haven't had open jam like that, like that. This is the same guy that a while back said that there's no more money to be made at 4 l because everyone's so good, right? Kirby, if that was you, let me find it. Kirby is the one that said no money at 4 l <laughs> Yeah, he did. Same one that's saying open jam your kings. I think he's being facetious. I'll give, I'll, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, man. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're being facetious. All right. Oh, ooh, let me refresh so that we have. Yeah, boom. Now we're now. See, now my win rate's sick. Like one hand later, my win rate's awesome. So that's why I say like don't. You really just can't worry about uh, hand. You know, hand to hand type of stuff like that. You just or session to session. You just gotta kind of look at your overall stuff and and make sure it's going in the right direction. Like if you're winning two big blinds per hundred hands after. 5,000 hands, like, hey, you're going in the right direction. You should be making some bonus money off of either rake back or your VIP program or whatever whatever it is. Um, you know, you should be doing all right, so. Also, the that's that, that shove on the river is key, right? I mean, you can't just, like, make a value bet there. You want to shove all in. You want to get all the money because most of the time, you're going to be good there. Well, he shoved for you, didn't he? I don't know. Yeah, he, he shoved all in. And I called? I'm watching it right now, yeah. yeah okay. All right, we'll raise our, our ace-king suited here. That makes it nice, though, you know? It's nice when someone else has a hand. That's, like, easy to... That's how you make your money. Or the sausage or the brown. <laughs> over there. I don't like this guy timing down that far. But he's then, nowhere near enough time down to see what I have.
He'd have to time down like all the way on like two streets. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Not to give anybody any ideas. <laughs> don't take anything he says seriously. Noted. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, I think we uh, we covered everything we wanted to during the show, right? Yeah. Once again, if you <laughs> like the show, tune in at uh, Friday uh, between 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, thanks for coming and stopping by. Yeah, well, I'll toy with the idea of trying to find another time that we can do the show. Uh, it'd be difficult. Um, it might not be a primetime thing like this. The only thing I can think of is like a Saturday night show also, just do Friday and Saturday night. Um, I'd be cool with that. i got to clear it uh, with, with the, uh, at the home front, and, um, and uh, that, that's that. So I'll let, the, uh, I'll let the stream go for a little bit here, and uh, I'll answer any other questions in the, uh, in the chat. And I'll, uh, if you guys have questions or anything, um, go ahead and ask. If you scroll down on the beta, you'll see a bunch of links. Um, my website, my Facebook page, my YouTube channel. Um, you know, feel free to like the, uh, the Facebook page, subscribe on the YouTube channel um, so you can see when I got new videos coming out. I try to release like two to three videos a week on YouTube. Um, that should be increasing or whatnot. And uh, uh, once I, I'm starting to kind of get ahead on my videos, which is good. Uh, so I don't know, expect two to three videos a week over on YouTube and then I'll be streaming on Twitch. So thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, thank you, uh, Shark Slayer, for, for making another show. And this has been episode four of the poker show, Squeeze Play. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for stopping by. Had to get that last.